Hello everyone! So today we're going to take a look at our form load function. We're going to take a look at building an array using a for loop and adding it to a list box here. So let's get started with our first piece of our setup here. So on the left I've already added a list box. Now I want to use the form load function. So what is that? The form load function is what runs immediately when this form opens. So to use the form load function, I can just double click on the form here. Anywhere in the gray should work. Just don't click the, the list box. Here we just have a regular list box that we're going to add data to here in a minute. Uh, the first thing I want to do is build an integer array. So we'll go over some of the important principles of that. So here, the first thing we need to do is define our variable type. In this instance, we are building an integer. And then by putting these square brackets, I say integer array. Now we're going to name it. This can be a variety of things, however you prefer to name your variables. I'm going to call mine integer array. Then we have the new keyword. This is required to build and initialize the int array variable that we have on the left hand side of the assignment operator. Int. So we are saying what to build. And here we're saying build int array. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this. You can see there's a red underline here. It wants me to say the size of the array. Now I can either say the size explicitly like I've done here or I can say it implicitly inside of this initialization squiggle bracket. Here it's assuming that there's a 5 here, which is why I don't need to put a 5, but arrays need to know the size beforehand. Now let's create a loop that's going to go over our array. First important detail I want to point out is this is okay with the compiler. This is the bare bones of what a for loop should have. It just needs all of this. This code will run. It won't do anything. But this is what is required by the compiler to complete your loop. We need two semicolons and the scope block for your for loop. Here we're going to put an initializer variable. This only runs once. This only runs once. You can think of that, you can think of this as just being outside of the for loop as well. Same effect, same exact effect. But in this instance, I'm putting it in here kind of just to group it and say, hey, this is only for the for loop and it releases the memory of the index. The index no longer exists once the for loop is done. That memory gets released, so it's generally a good practice to not put it outside the for loop unless you need that variable for later. But in this case, we do not. Some cases you might. Next thing we want to do here is create that if statement. So a for loop here is just a glorified if statement that runs for as long as we tell it. So in this case, my if statement, my Boolean condition, we're going to do when index is less than the length of int array here. So whenever this is true, the for loop continues running. And then at the end of our for loop, every time the for loop ends, this condition will run. Everything after the second semicolon will run 
at the end of the for loop. And here we just raise the value of index. And so that creates this Boolean conditional that will eventually turn false because eventually index will not be less than the length of this array, which is five right now. And that is everything that we would use to set up our for loop. So a quick review and rundown of that quick summary. This runs once. This is our initialization step. This runs once and only once and is released once the for loop is done. Here we have our if statement, you can think of it. It's our conditional that says when this is true, run the loop. And this here is what runs once you reach this part of the code right here, right? We're going to run all of this stuff that I've put right here. That All that code will run. And then once we get to this part, we will, we will run this piece of code, which is just going to raise our index value by one. It's going to start at zero. It's going to go to one, two, three, four. And once it hits five, this will become false and the for loop will stop. The last thing we want to do here is for our for loop is what it's going to run. So we want to add these integers to this list box here. The way we're going to do that is list box of ints. It has the name of the list box control here and items add items is to access what's on the list of the list box you're just going to need to be familiar with some of these intricacies and now we just need to put our interray and our index so interray here and then square brackets and now we need a value. So we're going to read from our array here, right? This add function needs, it says here, object item. So we could put strings. We can put a variety of items inside of the list box here. Here we're going to put integers. Right? This is an integer array. And then once I throw down the index, it becomes an integer. Everything I've highlighted in blue here is an integer. So that should complete our for loop. And just for a little bit of spice, let's also display this integer array in a message box. Let's display it in a message box too. So this code is going to run the minute I click start because we did form load. Quick refresh, we double clicked here, we got form load. And let's throw down the debugger real quick. So here we built our integer array. You can see we have the five values, the five indexes. Then our for loop, it's going to build this value first. It's going to check this conditional. It's going to be true. Here we add to the list box and we're going to add this item here at index zero, which is one. Then we raise the index here. Then we check our conditional again, and then that's going to rinse repeat until index here becomes five. Index is five. Now five is not less than five. This is false. And now we're going to display our message box. 
So here we've displayed our message box with this nice little string join function. The string join function just takes everything that's in the array and turns it into a string so it's easy to display. And now we have our list box with our five items. So that will conclude this short tutorial of how to use an integer array, use a for loop, and populate a list box, and display it. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.